friends in this video we are going to study the measurement of inductance by the maxwell inductance bridge maxwell inductance bridge is an alternating current bridge and this bridge measures the value of inductance by comparing it with a standard value of inductance so in this video we will study its circuit diagram how we can calculate the inductance from it and then we will see its phasor diagram also so let's start with our topic so this maxwell inductance bridge it is invented by the scientist maxwell and it is the most basic and simple bridge in its construction and it is used for the measurement of inductance it measures inductance by comparing the unknown value of the inductance is measured by comparing it with a known value of inductance or a standard inductance okay Now this Maxwell inductance bridge it is a type of alternating current bridge so it is also going to consist of four arms any bridge circuit it consists of four arms in those four arms we are having four unknown four impedances are connected out of those four impedances we are having three impedances which are known to us and there is one unknown impedance so in that bridge we will have four arms then we will have a detector for detecting the balance condition of the bridge and also an ac power supply and this power supply is used to operate the bridge circuit okay so this maxwell inductance bridge it is also going to consist of four arms detector and the ac power supply so let us first see its circuit diagram So this is the bridge circuit for the Maxwell inductance bridge. You can see we are having four arms AB, BC, CD and DA. Okay. In these four arms you can see we are having the impedances. These impedances can be a combination of the resistance, inductance and the capacitance means any of the series combination or parallel combination so you can see that arm ab it is a series combination of a resistance and inductance the value of these two is unknown to us we want to find out the value of this unknown inductance in terms of the known inductance l2 okay l2 is a standard inductance R2 is also a standard resistance r3 r4 are also the known non-inductive 
resistances okay so we will find out the value of this unknown inductance in terms of the known parameters then b is the detector which is used to obtain the balance condition of the bridge network and in between the arm ac the ac power supply is connected this power supply it is going to operate the bridge network So let us see the combinations present in this. In arm AB, you can see we are having an unknown inductance and a resistance. This unknown inductance is connected in series with a resistance. Rx. Then we are having arm um, BC. In arm um, BC, you can see in the circuit diagram we are having a known non inductive resistance R3. Then we have arm um, CD. That means this arm. In this arm also we are having a known non-inductive resistance R4. Non-inductive means that no inductive part is present in this resistance. This is a pure resistance. Then we have arm um, D A. In this arm um, D A, we are having again a series combination of the resistance and the inductance, but this inductance is a standard inductance. Okay. So, in arm DA, we are having a variable inductance L2 of fixed internal resistance small r2. And this inductance is connected in series with the variable resistance R2. So here you can see that in the diagram we are having R2 which is a variable resistance and this variable resistance is connected in another uh, with an, another variable inductance L2. Now this L2 is having some internal resistance and that is the, represented by small R2. So here we have written variable inductance L2 of fixed internal resistance small r2 which is connected in series with variable resistance capital R2. Okay. So this is the circuit configuration. Now to find out the value of the unknown inductance we will use the balance equation of the alternating current bridges. We know that the general form of the balance equation is Z1, Z4 equals to Z2, Z3. Z is the form in which we represent the impedance. Okay. So Z1 is the impedance in the first arm. Z4 is the impedance in the fourth arm. Then Z2 is the impedance in second arm. And Z3 is the impedance in the third arm. So as I have said, this, this arm is the first term. So total impedance is Z1. Here, this is Z3. This is Z2. And this is Z4. Okay. So Z1 into Z4 is equal to Z2 into Z3. This is the general form of the balance equation. 
So first of all, we will write the value of Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. Then put those values in this balance equation and then we will solve this balance equation to find out the value of the unknown inductance. So let us first see that what is Z1. Z1 is the impedance in the arm AB. You can see that Z1 is in the impedance in arm AB and it is the combination, series combination of Rx and Lx. Okay, so value of Z1 is equals to Rx plus when we represent the impedance then it is represented as J omega Lx. Okay, then Z2 it is again the series combination of the R2 plus small r2 plus this inductance. So again it will be R2 plus small r2 plus J omega L2. Okay. Then Z3. Z3 is just this resistance R3. So Z3 will be equals to R3. And Z4 is again just the resistance R4. So impedances are the combination of inductance, capacitance and resistance. Okay. So we have written their values that what is the value of these four impedances. Now after getting the value of these four impedances, we will put this value into this equation. Okay. So Z1 is Rx plus J omega Lx. This is Z1. Multiply this Z1 with Z4. Z4 is what? R4. Which is equal to Z2 multiply with Z3. Means this term multiply with R3. So R2 plus small r2 plus J omega L2 multiplied with R3. So this is the equation which we have got when we have put the values of Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4 in the general form of the balance equation for alternating current bridges. Now let's solve this. Rx multiplied with R4 plus J omega Lx R4. Multiply this inside you will get R2 plus a small r2 multiplied with R3 plus J omega L2 R3. This complete is multiplied with R3 and J omega L2 is multiplied with R3. Then R4 and Rx are multiplied and J omega Lx and R4 are multiplied. Now in this term, in this equation, if you see that Rx R4 and this term R2 plus a small r2 multiplied with R3, they are free from this omega term. Okay, so these are called the real terms. And J omega, J omega terms, they are called the imaginary terms. So if we separate out this complete equation as one equation in which only real parts are compared and another equation in which only the imaginary terms are equated, then breaking this will give us two equations. One will be Rx R4 equals to R2 plus a small r2 multiplied with R3 and when we compare the imaginary terms we will get J omega Lx R4 equals to J omega L2 R3. Okay, these are the two separate terms or two separate equations which we have got. Now from this equation if we want to find out the value of Rx it will come out to be R2 plus R3 sorry capital R2 plus a small r2 R3 divided by R4 and from here if we take the value of Lx so Lx is going to come out as J omega and J omega cancel out we will get L2 R3 upon R4. So by comparing these two equations or by getting the real and the imaginary parts, we can get the value of Rx and Lx. 
okay so you can see that in the circuit diagram we wanted to find out this z1 the unknown impedance which is rx plus lx we have find out the value of rx also and lx also rx and lx so you can see that this unknown index uh, inductance can be calculated by comparing it with a known inductance l2 okay so this is how we can use the maxwell inductance bridge for the measurement of self inductance by comparing it with a known inductance okay now next comes the phasor diagram The phasor diagram it shows the relation between the various phasors. Okay, phasors like we know that in this circuit because it is connected with the power supply, so voltage will be there, current will be there. Okay, so to get the relationship between the voltages across every component and the current across every component, we will draw the phasor diagram. Okay. Now to draw the phasor diagram, first of all, we should know the relationship between the voltage and current in the inductance, resistance and capacitance. So in the resistance, we know that voltage and current, they are in same phase with each other. Okay. For inductance, we know that voltage is going to lead the current by 90 degrees and in capacitance voltage is going to lag the current by 90 degrees. So this is the relationship between the phasors voltage and current between the phasors of voltage and current in the components resistance inductance and capacitance. So to draw the phasor diagram we should remember these uh, relationships then it will become easy for us to draw it okay. So let's start with the phasor diagram. Now to draw the phasor diagram first of all we take a reference phasor and all the other phasors they will be drawn with respect to that reference phasor. So we will use the current I1 as our reference phasor. Let's take the circuit also. You can see that the current flowing in each arm is represented as I1, I2, I3 and I4. And voltage drop across the arm is E1, E2, E3 and E4. And E is the total voltage. Okay. So we will see the relationship between I1 and E1 also and I1 and the voltage drop across the each component also. Okay, so we are taking the current I1 as our reference phasor. Okay, now let's start with each arm. In the first term, you can see that we are having a resistance. So voltage drop across this resistance will be in phase with the current. Okay, because in the case of resistance, we know that the voltage and current, they are in same phase with each other. So the voltage drop across this will be I1 Rx, okay, and voltage drop across this will be I1 Omega L1, okay. So the voltage drop and current, they will be in same phase for resistance and voltage is going to lead the current by 90 degree for the case of inductance. I1 is a reference phasor. We are going to draw the I1 and Rx on the same line. They are in same phase with each other. And voltage is 90 degree with it. So we will draw a phasor which is going to I1 omega Lx. Okay, 
Now this total voltage drop E1 across this arm, this total voltage drop is equal to the sum of the voltage drop across resistance and inductance. So it will be I1 Rx plus I1 omega Lx, sorry Lx. Okay, so if we take the uh, vector component here, if we take its resultant component, then that is equal to the E1 voltage drop. Okay, so the sum of these two is E1. Okay, now let's come to the next part that is the current E2. Uh, Okay, the current I2 and the voltage drop E2. Now here E2, it is going to be the sum of the voltage drop across the resistance part. Okay, across the this resistance will be I2 capital R2. Across this resistance, it will be I2 small R2. And across this inductance, it will be I2 omega L2. So resistive part is this and inductive part is this. Okay. Now when this bridge is balanced, the bridge is said to be balanced when no current is flowing through this detector or we can say that the voltage drop E1 is equal to the voltage drop E2. Also the voltage drop E3 is equal to the voltage drop E4. Now when we equate E1 and E2, we will see that in this E1 we are having the resistive component. The resistive part of the voltage is I1 Rx and here the resistive part is I2 R2 plus I2 small r2. So these will be equal to each other. So in the phasor diagram we have drawn I1 Rx. So this will be equal to I1 sorry I2 capital R2 plus a small r2 that is the resistive part and this inductive part is equal to I2 omega L2 and because E1 and E2 are equal to each other. So we have equated the resistive part also and the inductive part and because we know that the sum of these two is equal to E2 and E1 and E2 are equal to each other when the bridge is balanced. Now we know that here we have drawn I1 so on the same line we can draw I2 also okay because we know that for the inductance the voltage and current they are at 90 degree phase from each other so this is the 90 degree angle this is I1 uh, sorry this is I2 omega L2 so I2 will be 90 degree lagging behind it and I2 capital R2 plus a small r2 this is the resistive voltage part so that was in phase with the current so I2 is drawn on the same line. Now this half part is being completed. This part we have taken. Now we have to consider the second part that is this part. Now here you can see that I have said that E3 is equals to E4 and I3 the voltage drop across this resistance will be I3 R3 and voltage drop across this will be I4 R4. Okay. So I4 R4 will be in phase with the current, I3 R3 will be in phase with the current I3. Now when this bridge is balanced, no current is flowing here. So we also know that I1 current will be equal to I3 current and I2 current will be equal to the I4 current. Okay. So on the same line where we have drawn I1, I1 is equals to I3 and I2 is equals to I4. So currents we have known already. Now on the same line we have to draw the voltage also because we know that I3 R3 is in same phase with I3 and I4 R4 is same phase with I4. So I4 is drawn here. So on the same line here we are going to draw the I4 R4. And because E3 is equals to E4, I3 R3 will be equal to I4 R4. 
So where we have drawn I4, R4, there I3, R3 will also be there. And you can see that this voltage drop I3, R3 is in same phase with I3. Okay, so that part is also considered. And this I4, R4 is what? E4, I3, R3 is what? E3. So here we have drawn the phaser for E4 and E3. Now if we consider this total voltage E, E will be the sum of E1 plus E3 or it, we can say that it is the sum of E2 plus E4. When we add these two, we will get the complete voltage drop. If we add these two, we will get the complete voltage drop. So here we have drawn the phaser for E1 and E2. Here we have drawn the phaser for E4 and E3. So if we take the sum of E1 and E3, that is the total E. Or if we take the sum of E2 and E4, that is also the E. So extend these phasers. When we extend these phasers, we get our resultant phaser, which is E, which is the sum of E1 plus E3, or we can say E2 plus E4. So this is the complete phasor diagram for this Maxwell inductance bridge. We have shown here the relationship between the current and the voltage drop across each component present in the bridge network. Okay, just you have to keep in mind that what is the relationship between the voltage and current across these components. If you know these relationship, it is very easy to draw the phasor diagram. Just take a reference phasor and with reference to that phasor, draw the remaining phasors. So that is going to complete the phasor diagram. So in this video, we have studied the Maxwell inductance bridge, which is used for the measurement of the unknown inductance by comparing it with a known standard inductance. This bridge is the most basic bridge, the most simple bridge, which is used for the measurement of inductance. And here we studied its circuit, its balance equation, the value of the unknown inductance and its phasor diagram. So I hope that this topic is now clear to you. Thank you.